So I guess the clue is in the name. You're in Hong Kong for Bloomberg Invest Asia. What are you interested in in the region? What are you investing in now? So Hong Kong is a, is just an incredibly important geography for us as a, as Mubadra. We use it as a jumping board, as a springboard, if you will, into Asia uh, uh, and certainly mainland China. So for us, the areas that are most interesting are high tech certainly artificial intelligence, some of the other kind of related adjacencies that are close by. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also look at areas like real estate, certainly healthcare, traditional private equity, and a lot of the other areas that you would expect a large investor to look at. Mm -hmm. Do you ring fence capital or money to deploy into tech investments? Do you have a pot that you're looking to deploy at the moment? So so we have allocations, if, uh, if that's what you mean. So the way that we're organized as an investment company is we determine both sector and asset class types of uh, types of exposure. Mm. And so what we will do is not say this is how much we're going to put in China, but we will say this is how much we're likely to allocate over a given period of time to Asia, for example, mm. in these particular asset classes. Right. Now, one of the ways that you deploy that capital is through partnerships, and you are partnered with the SoftBank Vision Fund. We are indeed. One of the biggest tech investment vehicles out there. Mm -hmm. Any additional partnerships on the way? So we're always uh, talking to new folks, whether it's in Asia or other places. So part of the DNA of Mubadra is partnership. Almost everything that we do is done with first class, best in class type partners all around the world. SoftBank is one of them, but we are exploring partnerships with a lot of different entities, both here and in mainland China, certainly in Japan, Singapore, and others from an Asia focus. What do you think about valuations at the moment? We hear, especially in tech, all the unicorns out there. It seems yeah. unicorns seem to multiply by the day, especially in China. Mm -hmm. Are valuations tricky for you at the moment? So I think valuations are always tricky because at the end of the day, what you want to do is pay the right price mm -hmm. given the amount of risk involved. And so it's not just about where you are in the cycle, but it's also about being a smart investor. Mm. And so entry point, as you know, is really important. And so we spend a lot of time due diligencing uh, each one of the different potential partnerships that we're going to have to make sure that we're entering at the right uh, at the right valuation. Right now, in addition to actually investing in tech companies, you are also trying to cultivate the tech industry within the UAE and within Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you've done on that front is opening this tech hub in Abu Dhabi. I'm curious how much money you're spending on that project and if any companies have signed up to it yet. So, so Tech Hub, and you're going to hear more about this on Sunday when we actually do the official release. I want to hear more about it now. <laughs> is, is an ecosystem that we're building in, uh, in Abu Dhabi. And what will make it special is that, is that we already have so many deep-seated partnerships within the SoftBank framework and otherwise who we know are interested in growing in our part of the world. Mm. And they're going to be using uh, uh, the, the tech ecosystem that we're building as a springboard for Africa, for the Middle East, so on and so forth. What's also important is that Mubadra will provide capital from an investment perspective. And so we're still thinking through what that's going to look like, mm. but certainly one of the things that's been missing in the region is the ability for growth investors to come in and allow these companies to move from seed to a slightly later stage to growth and so Mubadha is going to play an important role in shepherding those companies along those different stages. So would that look like a venture capital type fund, but for a slightly late stage? I think that's right. Okay. Good way to describe it. Interesting. All right. Uh, so one of the things that has been happening with Mubadala, I mentioned you have $225 billion yeah. worth of assets and counting. You rolled up IPIC. Attic has been added as well. Does that expansion change your strategy at all? I don't think so. So, so uh, Attic is a, is a wonderful member to, uh, to the Mubadra family, and they've been incredibly effective given the investment strategy that they've been pursuing for you know about 10 years now. And so they do what they do, they do it well, mm -hmm. and they're a wonderful complement. Let me tell you just a, just a couple of examples from a synergy perspective sure. that I think have made a huge amount of sense for us. So oftentimes we will invest with the same sets of, of fund managers and have similar relationships, whether it's in North America or other places. So what we do is we make sure that we talk as institutions to try and leverage either co-investment opportunities or similar managers to you know have uh, have better partnerships. Mm. Now, I mean, IPIC plus ADIC into Mubadala, that's part of the wider consolidation story that we've seen in Abu Dhabi. We've had a number of bank consolidations at yep. this One time. very recent. Yes, indeed. Uh, continued speculation over the future of Etihad slash Emirates. Do you think there's more consolidation to come? 
So con consolidation happens when you've got a strong economic rationale. Mm -hmm. So as long as that rationale is there, then you're likely to see more, uh, more and more consolidations. But it's important, that, uh, you know, to understand that these consolidations, you know, are best when they are part of a natural process, mm -hmm. right? When everybody sees value in that consolidation. So as long as that's there, you're going to see more. So when I left Abu Dhabi uh, not so long ago, about yeah. five months ago, Al Maria Central, this huge shopping mall that yeah. was being built very close to the Bloomberg office, was still in development. Now it looks like some of its big anchor tenants are, are maybe in doubt, given mm -hmm. the slowdown in the Abu Dhabi economy and in the real estate and retail sector. Give us some color on that. Sure. What, what are you seeing right now? So, so the way that I would characterize it is you know that retail has essentially changed everywhere on earth mm -hmm. and the reason why it's changed is because of companies like Amazon and you know some of the uh, some of the Asian uh, you know counterparts to, to Amazon so right now it's less about bricks and mortar and it's more about e-commerce mm -hmm. so when you think about you know a large shopping destination it's not like shopping is going to end or people are going to stop going out it's that you have to reinvent the experience mm -hmm. so one of the things that's happened recently is we've all gotten around the table and we have thought about how we can reinvent the shopping experience and turn it more into a leisure type activity mm -hmm. and have less focus on just the pure shopping mm -hmm. One of the great things about, about discontinuities like this is that it forces you to reinvent yourself mm. and rethink about the way that you want to curate experiences for different people. Mm. So a couple of examples. We've added more food and beverage. People are still eating outside. People are still you know, going out and wanting to have that type of experience. We've added a lot of entertainment facilities for kids, for teenagers, and for different age groups. We have a very large cinema that's coming up mm -hmm. uh, and theater system. So at the end of the day, it's not that people are stopping to go out. It's not that people are stopping to shop. It's about reinventing yourself in a manner that's relevant to people's newer preferences. Well, would you believe it? We've made it almost through the entire interview without talking about oil or petrochemicals uh, okay. for once. So I need to correct the situation. All right. Could you ever see yourself doing asset swapping with Adnan? That's a, that's a great question. So, so as you know, we're sister companies. Mm -hmm. And so, because we're owned by the same shareholder at the end of the day, from our perspective, we talk incredibly regularly, and we talk about what makes sense. You know that Mubadra already has an integrated capability that's international. And of course, Adnoc is our champion at home. Mm -hmm. So there's a huge amount of synergy and learning that goes both ways. Mm -hmm. So we're continuing in dialogue, talking about a lot of interesting things. But it's on the table. I think a lot of things are on the table, and we talk about the vast, vast spectrum of possible ways to work together.